Today, I'm going to talk to you about the Sony RX0 and why I like this little camera and why it's going to be an important part of our little arsenal. Let me show it to you. Kevin Raber here with the Luminous Landscape, sitting by the canal on a balmy December day in Indianapolis. I'm having fun. I'm out here with Michael, our new team member for Luminous Landscape, and wanted to talk to you about a new camera that Sony put out. And before I show you this camera, I want you to kind of understand at least that it seems like I talk a lot about Sony. Well, number one, I do because Sony's put so many cameras out in the last few months and they just keep adapting and innovating and putting new cameras out. What have we seen from Sony this year? We've seen the A9, the A7R3, the RX0, the RX10, and of course, you know, I'm a, a Sony user. I have all Sony lenses. Uh, I do most of our videos uh, with either the Sony and or Panasonics. We're shooting this one on the A7R Mark III. But today, I'm gonna to talk to you about the Sony RX0. That is a camera. It's a one inch, 21 megapixel camera. It's got a one inch sensor stacked, 24 millimeter equivalent lens, sound input in the front, and it really is simple to operate, a lot of fun. It's not a GoPro replacement, so don't think of it that way, but it is an action cam, and it has a lot of cool features. It works just like almost any other Sony, so if you're used to the menu system, you'll get used to it very quickly. Power it on, and then the red button on top allows me to do video, which I'm doing right now. So it does a great job on the video, and we'll see somebody running back there, and you can see the video setup we want. But the menu system is something that's really very nice. I'm going to get this out of the way real quick. The screen is too small, and for my poor eyes, it's very hard to adjust the screen, because what Sony's done is poured it over the menu system from there are other cameras, or at least uh, portions of the menu system, and thus it's not big type. You almost have to really work at seeing it. And out here in bright light, it's not like uh, the GoPro. In the GoPro, you can look at the back of the screen and you can actually see the image. Here, you have a very hard time in bright light seeing the image. I'd have to really, really work at it. Uh, that is a downer. Now this camera also does still pictures, which is what I primarily use it for. Actually, now it's become my pocket camera. I can stick it in my pocket, take it to restaurants, take it to wherever I want, and uh, take some great still shots. If I want, I can throw it on a little tripod like this and shoot pictures. I can sit it in front of me, adjust it, I can close it up, hold it at my arm's length, and I can do videos. And I can just turn it around and do some more. It has some really good slow motion capability also. Uh, you'll read the specs in the uh, review below, but it has a capability with very high frame rates of giving you some incredible slow motion. It is a 1080 recording resolution. It's not 4K. However, if you put an external monitor onto this, you can record 4K out of the HDMI output. So uh, they sell a cage and you can put the cage on here and then put a 4K monitor up top that has capability of recording 4K and essentially record 4K. But at that point, why do it, okay? Because there are other solutions, as you know, that you can work with uh, to shoot that kind of stuff. We're gonna be using this camera a lot in uh, some of our recordings and I'm going to be giving this camera to Michael after this short video and he's going to be doing a number of videos with it. He'll try it out for some of the slow motion capabilities and uh, some of the action capabilities. And so that he can actually do that, uh, got a couple little things for him that he can play with. This is designed to uh, go on the windshield of a car or a metal uh, area and uh, kind of suction cup it and the camera sits right in here. So he can set up some action shots. This is a giant clamping system. So you can put it on a bicycle or a tree or anything and it just, you know, like clips in right here. And this is also pretty cool if you want to just do self-logging too. The record button. And now I'm actually recording uh, as I would if I was a vlog looking straight at the camera. Now I can't see the monitor so I don't know what I'm recording, but if I'm looking straight at the center of the lens, I should be okay. And as I turn this around, you can see that Michael's back here filming me. And uh, it does a really good job on color and exposure and it works out really well, but uh, the genius of it is supposedly the fact that there's a very durable and 
course, I'm doing my own sound with this right now, too, so hopefully you can be able to tell, and Michael can cut in with the sound that we're actually recording from uh, my lapel mic versus the sound from the camera, and you can see the kind of differences in what to expect as far as sound quality goes. Also, what we plan to do, of course, we say we plan because we might fail at this, is when we're doing certain videos, we can actually set this camera on top of a camera, and when I'm actually shooting, this camera can be recording what I'm shooting. And by the way, I'm using the RX-10 IV. We're doing a review on that right now. So essentially, and you can see what I'm actually shooting at the same time and hear what we're actually shooting. Ooh, that just sounds cool, doesn't it? Also, I can film both in the horizontal uh, uh, view upside down. So it automatically write itself as I go. So actually I'm filming right now and you should be able to see the video right itself. Kind of cool. Let me show you a couple other little things on the camera. You've got a side door here which is very secure and weather sealed so you can pop it open in there. You've got your battery that sits in there and this is a tiny little battery. Maybe I'll get a hundred pictures out of this little chiclet battery. Uh, maybe not, and maybe maybe 20 minutes or so of video out of it before it decides that it uh, wants to turn off. So by popping this, there's another little hatch here. I pop that down and you get this other door and the door comes off, so be careful. I know I'm going to lose this thing once in a while, but I have an HDMI output, a USB connection, and a, a microphone uh, jack if I want to do external uh, sound into this. So it's pretty clever. Uh, like I said, the menu system works once again. You've got a menu, you got navigation buttons, you got a function menu for quick access, you got a select button, and some of these buttons are also double duty, like the play button is a double duty button. The rear screen sucks, okay? Simple as that. You can't see it unless you're inside. You can see enough reference points that I know I'm pointing it at Michael this way. Uh, the menu, you need a magnifying glass to be able to read it. Uh, and we'll show you some close-ups of that so you know exactly what we're talking about. But overall, for a tiny little camera, it does quite well. I had a lot of fun taking still pictures with it. Uh, they'll be in the article itself also. It fits in my pocket, does a damn good job. I shoot RAW and I shoot JPEG, but I've only been using the RAWs and it's been doing a pretty good job. And we'll include a little bit of video with this whole thing. Get a chance to see what it's like. What I normally do right now is I have a little bag the charger, uh, extra batteries, and the camera. And this way, it's sort of protected and I can keep this in my briefcase or in my jacket pocket. It all fits in pretty nicely right here. So uh, it's very light. But uh, now I have a camera I can have with me at all the time. I'm going to take this camera down to Antarctica in about a month and I'll give it a shot there. And then, of course, we've got the uh, trusted old Joby. Uh, this not only a great little tripod to have with you, but it's also one that I can do uh, vlogging or hold up anytime I want and also connect around anything. So, you know, if we were trying to record something and wanted B-roll, we could set this poor little tiny camera up and uh, shoot with it that way. Let's see how the video turns out. Uh, Michael's going to have a little bit of fun with this as a, a video camera coming up and we'll cut some things together and give you an idea of what the capabilities of the RX-0 is. It's a 600 and some odd dollar camera. Is it worth it? I don't know. That's still out to, to be debated. Um, it's a great camera to use, but there's no viewfinder. And like I said, the screen's pretty small, pretty hard to see in bright light. However, if you just want to be able to point the camera and shoot a picture or be able to have it for the things that we do as B-roll, it'll probably work just fine, specifically when we want to do slow motion and some action stuff. So a lot of the future videos, you'll probably see some scenes with it in it. And of course, in this little review, you'll get a chance to see some things that it's capable of. Anyway, once again, Sony's doing it, doing it right, and uh, they just keep coming out with stuff. So stay tuned. We'll have more Sony gear to look at and some other cool gear to look at. And uh, appreciate you stopping by. Let's see you on the Loomis Landscape. I can't believe I have a selfie stick now.